Hello and welcome to Code Tutorials. Today we'll be taking a look at the Author Info widget from the Key Add-ons for Elementor Premium plugin. This widget lets you tailor how you want to present your post authors and what information on them you want to share. This is one example of the widget's use. This content on the left is there to show what the author info would look like in context. However, you can use it as a standalone element or add the author info widget as a calling card anywhere on your site. And as you can see, this page we're on showcases different versions of the author info widget. You can style it completely differently depending on what setting you have planned for it. You can choose to use images or only stick with descriptive text. Decide on backgrounds, layouts, whether you want to include contact information, add social media links, email contact, and more. There are all kinds of author presentations you can make with this widget. So, let's see how it works. Head over to the back end. And, as you can see, I already prepared the section where I'll be putting my author info widget. I have one column empty for that, and another column with the blog post, which I added using the blog list widget. That's another widget from the key add-ons collection, specifically the free one. And I set it to show only one post, as that's more than enough to illustrate how the author info can look within a broader context. So, now I just need to add this widget to the empty column. To do that, I'll simply search for author info in the Elementor sidebar. There it is. Drag it over to the right. And this is what the widget looks like by default. There's a placeholder image, a title, and some text. When customizing it, we'll start from the top. So I'll replace the image by clicking on this field. And then selecting a new one. OK. Insert media. There it is. If you're using an image, you can pick its proportions. For example, you can display the image in a smaller dimension by picking the thumbnail setting. But, given that I uploaded an image with suitable proportions already set, I'll simply return to original. Alright. Under that, we have the title field. This is where you'd set the author name. Give me a moment to type it in. Alright. And then we have this option. Use current author name as title. What that means is, if we switch it to yes, whoever created the page or post where the author info widget is being added will have their username shown. Since I created this post and I'm a site admin, that's what's being shown here. This is a useful feature if you have multiple contributors and they all create the posts themselves. With it, they can sign their work in a way. Ok, I'll switch this back. After that, we have the text field where we can set some kind of description or more information about the author. I'll be replacing this dummy text now. Just give me a moment to type it in. There. Alright. Next, we have the email field. I'll be adding one for my author, but it's up to you whether you want to give a contact point to visitors or not. Any email you add via this field will automatically get a mail to attribute. OK. Below this, we have the signature field. This is where you can upload an image of the author's signature. We can see an example of that on the widgets page. There. This is what it might look like if you opt to add a signature. After that, we have the link field where you can set a URL which will be accessible by clicking on the author image. Then we can enable social icons. I'll switch mine to yes. And this is OK, they won't appear automatically until we decide if we want to use textual social icons or graphic ones. For the icons, you'd first have to upload one or select one from the icon library using the options within the item below. And then your icon will appear in the element. For the textual version of the icons, you simply need to enable them here. When I switch this to yes, this placeholder text appears. There's only one word, or one icon if you prefer, because I only have one item by default, and it won't be clickable until we add a link to it. If you opted for graphic icons instead of text, it would be the same thing. Then we have this option, enable links underline hover, if we want to add a line under the text. Please note, this option only applies to the textual icons. I'll show it to you once I've customized my icon or item. OK. 
Finally, we reach the part with the items. As I said, I have one by default, and I'll open it so we can see what options it contains. This field in the middle, icon type, is where you'd select your icon, if you opted for the graphic rather than the textual version of a social link. And whether you're using a graphic or a textual icon, you'll need to set a link for it. Given that I opted for textual icons, I now need to customize the placeholder text. You can see it displayed here. I'm going to type over it to set a reference to Facebook. And once you've determined the social network you want to show, you can set the URL to your account there. Since this is just a tutorial, I'll put a hashtag as a placeholder. And if we hover over the icon now, it looks clickable. And while I'm here, I can show you the underline. By switching this to yes, when we hover over the icon, an underline appears. And it's only visible when you hover. Okay, I'll disable this. Now, I want to show more social links for my author, and before I start adding more items, I want to quickly show you what a graphic instead of a textual icon might look like here. So, the network I've selected is Facebook. I'll disable the textual social icons and then click here so I can select a replacement. And then I'll search the library for Facebook icons. I'll use this one. Insert. And there it is a graphic icon instead of a textual one, and it's linked to the same URL we set in the item link field. Ok, that was just to demonstrate the alternative, however, I do want to use textual social icons, so I'll delete this and switch this back to yes. There we go. And now I can add a few more items. I'll do that by clicking on this button. But we'll skip ahead while I customize them, as we don't need to waste time by going over the same options again. Alright, here we are. I have four items, or icons, in total, each for a different social network. Which means my customization is pretty much done, and I can move on to styling my element shortly. Before we get to that, though, we have two more sections in this tab. One is the developer tools. It contains an option that can show the widget in the form of a standard WordPress shortcode, that's this text, which we can copy for use elsewhere on our site. I'll switch this back. Besides that, we have the Help section. This is where you can find some helpful resources, such as access to our Help Center, in case you need them. And that's all we have here, so let's move on to the next tab, Style. For starters, we can adjust the content horizontal alignment. By default, it's on the left, but we can shift it to the center or the right. I'll put mine in the center. Then we have the author info padding, if we want to add more space around the entire widget content. You can see how everything shifts to accommodate the new padding all around. Let me clear this. Ok. In fact, I'll set 0 in case there is some minor padding by default. Alright. Next, we have the style section where we can adjust the look of our text content. So, here we can change the title tag. That's for this text here. You can pick anything from h1 to the p tag. I'll set h2. Ok. After that, we have the text color. It has this easy to use color picker so you can set anything you like. Then there's the title hover color if you want to give your author's name a different color that would appear on hover, like so. And then we have the title typography. In here we can change the font family for the item text. There is a wide selection for you to choose from. Alongside that, we can change the font size and font weight. Then we have the transform option if we want to turn the text uppercase, lowercase, capitalized or keep it normal. I'll make mine uppercase. After that, we have the style option where we can make the text, for example, italic. Following that, the decoration option lets us add a line over, under or through our text. Finally, we have the line height, letter spacing and word spacing, if we want to add more space either above and below our text or to spread out our letters or words. And that's it for the typography options. After that, we have a set of similar options for the descriptive text, so we can change the text tag. That's for this text here. 
I'm happy keeping the paragraph tag for it. Then we have the text color. With it, we can easily set any color we want. And alongside that, we have the text typography. If we open these options, we can see that we get all the same things we had with the title typography. So there's no need to waste your time by going over them again. Okay, next we have the icon color. As its name suggests, it's used to replace the color on the social icons here. I'm going to make mine entirely black. There. And there's also the icon hover color option. By default, it's the same color you set for the regular icon color, so we don't see any changes on hover. However, you can pick something new and then the icons will change colors when you hover over them. I'll be using black for this as well, but I'll give it a degree of transparency. There. And now when we hover, the icons seem to get lighter. Below that, we have the icon typography settings. Again, these contain the same selection of options we've seen already, so there is no need to cover them again. Before we carry on though, I'll just quickly use the weight option to set 500 and make my icons bolder. There, perfect. After that, we have the email color option if we want to change the color of the email text. You can see it here. I'm going to set a solid blue for this. There it is, quite eye-catching. Besides the regular color, we can also set the hover color for the email. In that case, hovering over the email address will show the other color. For this, I'll use the same color but give it a degree of transparency. The same approach I used for the social icons. And now when we look, it seems to get lighter. A subtle change to keep things interesting. This brings us to the last option in this section, and that is the email typography. If we open it, we can see the options are the same as the ones we've seen before. There is nothing I want to change here, so let's carry on. That means switching to the next section, spacing style. It includes options that allow us to adjust the content spacing within the element. So, we have things like the title margin top. This would let us add more space above the author's name. I'm going to set 27 pixels for this. Then we have text margin top for adding more space above this descriptive text here. You can drag the slider or type in a value. I'll set 7 pixels for this. Alright. Next, there's the email margin top. That's for adjusting this space here. It's up to you whether you prefer it closer to or further away from the rest of the content. I'll leave mine set to 21 pixels. After that, we have the signature margin top. In case you added an image with a signature, you could create more space above it using this option. Then there's the social icons margin top option. It's for adding more space here, above the icons and separating them from the description. For this, I'll set 22 pixels. Okay. And lastly, we have the single icon margin. This option allows us to space out our social icons. So we get more space to the left and right of the individual icons. You can see how they spread out when I increase the value here. I'll set 5 pixels. And that's it, one more section done. That leaves us with only background style to cover. We can use it to set the background color for our author info element. It has this familiar color picker to help us set any shade we like. You can see a great example of background color use on the widgets page. Let me find it here. This author info example has a bold background with text content in a contrasting color. Leaving out the image makes the whole thing minimalist but eye-catching nonetheless. Okay, let me clear this. There. And if we switch over to the hover settings, we have a few more options here. The first is background hover color, if we want to set a different color that will be visible only on hover, like so. We can also pick the background image hover. This is the effect that the author image will have when it's hovered over. The default is zoom in, and it looks like this. It's also set to originate in the image center, but you can switch that with any of the other options offered here. Let's see what left would look like. And there, it looks like this. You can try the other settings to see which origin point you like the best. 
Also, you should keep in mind that you can pick the origin point only when you're using one of the zoom hover effects, meaning either the default zoom in or the alternative zoom out, which looks like this. We also have the move effect, which looks like this, or we can set none, so the image is entirely effect free. You can see nothing happens when I hover. This is the setting I'll be keeping. And that was the last of our options. So let me hit update to save my work. My author info element is done and I'm quite happy with how it turned out. It helped us look over all the widget options and it allowed me to show you how one of the examples from the widgets page was put together. If you'd like to try your hand with something different, you can see the other examples on this page. The design solutions vary when it comes to which bits of content are shown, as well as how they are arranged and styled. You can also find the example I copied here, but it's just one of many, and they are all here to give you an idea of what you can do with this widget, to inspire you, or to provide a blueprint you can copy. However, you aren't limited by what you find here. We've gone over all the options and you now know how to use them, so you can just as easily create something unique to present your site's authors. Ultimately, we hope you found this tutorial on the author info widget from the key add-ons for Elementor Premium plugin helpful. If you have any questions, comments or suggestions, please drop us a line in the comments below. Also, make sure to subscribe to our channel and be the first to learn about new theme guides and tutorials. Thank you for watching.